Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj, your host today. This is 20 July 2013 and I'm in front of you back again after I think a month's time. Uh, today I want to discuss uh, why I came in front of you today is because you know some of the major uh, events are taking place, right? The inflation number came out in last week and rupee continues to slide and uh, the Indian Central Bank RBI announced that they are going to arrest the slide of rupee and they announced some of the, some of the measures which I will discuss today. Uh, they are you know, quite ineffective. And then I will uh, also want to comment on uh, some of the statements of RBI's uh, uh, governor, uh, Duvi Shubharao. Uh, but mainly today I want to focus on the inflation number which came out last week. So the first item which we are going to discuss today is this inflation number. Uh, the wholesale price index inflation uh, rose to 4.86% in uh, last week, that is June. With the falling rupee putting pressure on prices and ultim un untimely raising, un untimely rains having impacted production of vegetables, inflation rose marginally to 486 percent in June breaking a four month long declining trend and these are the official numbers and uh, most of my uh, listeners most of my viewers are knowing that this uh, official figures are all phony uh, this WPI is 4.86 percent but actually if you go in the market to buy something then the prices are rising by double digit percentages so for example right now the prices of onion are quite you know high for example uh, prices of tomato are very high recently there was a hike in milk products right so onion is trading at 50 rupees plus per kg uh, tomato is uh, selling at 50 rupees plus uh, uh, per kg so this this you know as I said this inflation numbers which government is showing is all phony and actually the real inflation day-to-day uh, -day inflation if you go to market to shop and that inflation is quite high and that is the reason why the RBI is quite reluctant in you know uh, reducing the their interest rate you know uh, Subarav in fact uh, recently I think yesterday he said that he is not sure whether he is going to get another term or not he has not yet received any kind of you know uh, invitation from the government for continuation of his next term and I as I said in my past, you know, uh, video blog also that probably he will not get the second term because uh, the government is quite desperate to remove him because they want somebody who can print, you know, money very quickly, very uh, fast for them, you know, and in fact they are, you know, very much planning to hijack the whole uh, committee of, you know, who sets the monetary policy. They want to put their own bureaucrats. So that we will see in November, but as I said, this inflation number is not reflecting the reality. But what I want to do today quickly is, you know, give you a, a wrap up of what inflation actually is, because most of the people simply don't understand what inflation is and what are the causes of inflation and how actually we can eliminate inflation, uh, uh, systematic inflation, right? I, I have already done this thing in my past video blogs, but maybe it is time to recap that again. So very briefly. Uh, inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is nothing but increase in the supply of money and credit out of thin air. So whenever uh, you have increase in the supply of money and credit, both things, then that is inflation. Now this uh, increase in the supply of money and credit has three major effects. So there are three effects of inflation. The first effect is the uh, rising prices uh, which you know uh, wrongly the mainstream economists say that that is inflation a uh, rise in the general price level but rise in the there is no such thing as a general price level uh, there is only relative prices so this rising prices is one chief effect of inflation then the second effect of inflation is the boom bust cycle the business cycles right the uh, by printing a lot of money and increasing the supply of money the central bankers reduce the interest rate uh, market interest rate artificially and because of that they create phony artificial uh, boom activities and when now uh, that uh, inflation you know goes out of hand they, they put break you know on that you know lower interest rate they, they hike the interest rate and because of that higher interest rate what will happen is 
the boom will you know turn into buzz so that boom buzz cycle the business cycle is also being created by uh, by the inflationary policies of the central bankers and the and the third effect is the wealth transfer that is taking place from um, the people who are well can you know those uh, from the people who are poor from those people the wealth is transferring to the people who are well connected with the government those people who get the this freshly printed money you know in the first place so suppose you know if i am a government ser- government servant um gov- you know rbi prints a lot of money and i i get this salary in terms of you know rising price and you know, rising uh, salary and when i go and purchase some item in the market at that time the prices have not risen so what will happen i can buy the things at the cheaper prices but when my my action of buying something increases the prices so they the note this currency note you know i'm giving to that you know seller and he goes and he tries to buy something in the market at, at that time so he receives the money next from me and at that time the prices have gone up and like that it just slowly enters the whole economy and in the end whoever is getting that currency note he is facing you know very steep higher prices and he is purchasing power of that currency note which is in his hand has eroded and that's why his standard of living has go, gone down so so what is happening is this this parasitic non productive class is actually right now transferring wealth from the productive class of this indian society so this three are main effects of inflation rising prices boom bust cycle and the transfer of wealth from the poor and fr- basically from the productive class of the society to the unproductive class of the society so that that is inflation and its you know effects right uh, so what are the causes of inflation as i said <clears throat> yeah all over the world right now the only institution that is in charge of you know money supply who controls the supply of money is central bank so in india uh, the rbi the reserve bank of india is in control they have the monopoly power over the supply of money so they are the ones who are creating the, this money out of thin air they are the ones who are increasing the supply of money and credit so that is the major chief only source of increased money supply so what they do actually is they increase the money supply they write a blank check and they give it to the banks right those who are basically selling or buying the government treasury the primary dealers now i am not going into the detail because uh, details because i don't have the time right now for that but this video blog can be can turn into a big lecture right so what i'm saying is they create the base money and the commercial banks those who function on the basis of fractional reserve banking standard what they do is they pyramid their own money on this you know base money so what they do they also enhance this inflation they also increase the supply of money via their fractional reserve banking practices so and this whole process is called uh, money creation uh in mainstream economics so the central bank first creates the base money and on on that base money this commercial banks or functioning on the basis of fractional reserve banking standard they pick up made further money and that's how the whole money supply is getting enhanced into the economy and this to institution central bank as the prime cause and the commercial banks who are working on frb fractional reserve banking standard they are the ones who are creating this inflation nobody else is responsible for creating inflation no speculator or no buyer or seller or no nothing else is responsible for creating inflation only central banks monetary policy is solely responsible for creating inflation so if anybody is telling you that speculators or monsoon or these or that is you know responsible for inflation then they are of course lying to you right because simply they don't understand what inflation is as i said inflation is not rising prices inflation is in increase in the supply of money and credit and only rbi and its monetary policy is responsible for their increase in the supply of money and credit so these are the chief cause you know causes one as i said central bank and then the commercial banks were working on the frb fractional reserve banking standard a uh, fra- fractional reserve banking means you know suppose if i deposit 100 rupee in the bank then bank is uh, by law not you know required they are not required to keep all that 100 rupees in my deposit account they can you know they can only keep let's say 10% whatever the cash reserve ratio is and they can lend 
uh, another 90 rupees to somebody else that's how they create money out of thin air that 100 rupees is in my checking account so i am also using that 100 rupees and at the same time they're also lending 90 rupees out of that 100 rupees to somebody else so that that somebody else is also using that 90 rupees so from 100 rupees they have created 190 rupees so basically that's how they create you know the money supply out of thin air right so these are the these are the causes now what we can do if you want to stop inflation if you want to eliminate inflation quickly as i said the first answer is we have to dismantle the rbi there are no other options right we have to take the supply of money's monopoly out of the government and central bankers hand and you know put it into again marketplace right again we need to have a free market commodity money standard instead of having this central banker government run fiat you know paper currency standard so first thing we have to do is to dismantle the rbi this dismantling means just completely eliminate the rbi we don't need that kind of central banking we don't need central planning in money market we know that you know theory and history both shows that central planning never works so the same thing is happening in money market also so first thing we have to dismantle the rbi second thing is we have to go back to again as i said market commodity uh, standard that means you know gold standard pure gold standard not any kind of phony gold standard silver can also be used as uh, as money right uh, with you know side by side with gold so a market based commodity money standard monetary standard and the third thing is we have to stop this fraudulent banks from practicing this illegal immoral fractional reserve banking practice we have to demarcate the both the function of banks of loan banking and deposit bankings and in deposit bankings we need to install 100% reserve standard so for example if i put 100 rupees in my deposit account my checking account then the bank must keep that 100 rupees in my account instead of lending it to somebody else so that is 100% reserve standard so these three things are immediately required right if rbi stops printing money immediately right even before we dismantle them if they stop printing money then the inflation will stop and then slowly after some you know time lag we will see that the prices will also start to go down because the money supply has completely halted but as i said these are all politically incorrect solutions and no government is going to or no central bank is going to implement that ultimately we will have to you know see the whole collapse of the monetary system and only then we can have some kind of reset of another system and i don't know what that another system is going to be maybe some kind of phony gold standard they will try to bring in not the pure gold standard which i am advocating or what the austrian economists are advocating or what sound monetary theory is you know basically telling us but in any case you know uh, this is what inflation is and uh, right now as long as the rbi is not stopping money printing we are going to see the effect of inflation in terms of rising prices uh, the second thing which I want to discuss uh, is that, uh, as I said, uh, the RBI was, you know, panicking because the rupee is, you know, falling. It it uh, touched something like sixty-one you know, rupees per one dollar, and they announced some money tightening measures last, you know, last week. You know, they they the RBI raised two rates by two percent points and plans to drain one hundred and twenty billion rupees, two billion. US dollar through open market sales of government bonds. Uh, the measure should not be, uh, the central bank increased the marginal standing facility and the bank rate to 10.25% for 8.25%. But as I said, even uh, this uh, so called money tightening, you know, liquidity sucking uh, policies are not going to work as long as they are not stopping printing money absolutely and as I said immediately what happened is you know instead of uh, just rupee just stabilized for a while and then again started you know to weakening right so uh, and as I said in the end I wanted to discuss this uh, Subbarao statement that RBI intervenes in forex market to smooth volatility the RBI lets the exchange rate be market determined 
but intervenes to smooth volatility. <laughs> so that is quite funny. If he thinks that uh, our exchange rates are determined by the market forces, then why RBI is intervening? And if RBI is intervening, then uh, exchange rate is not being determined by the market forces. So these guys are just fooling all of us. And you know, as I said, nothing is going to change as long as RBI is in place and as long as government is running its huge deficits and they keep on spending money on one after another funny programs like this recent food security bill as long as they are doing that inflation is not going to go down or nothing is going to change as i said so and ultimately they have waged a big war in you know, on uh, gold also and um, they have almost banned the sale of gold it's getting a bit difficult right now but i think slowly as uh, this mongol gold will enter indian territories i think it will the supply situation will you know improve a bit so Nothing has changed. Everything is, you know, same. You know, uh, Indian economy is going downhill, and as long as uh, the policies are not changing, nothing is going to change. So you just, as I say, take care out there. Don't involve yourself into any kind of paper promises. Just continue to stick with your hard assets. Continue to diversify from paper promises, and take care of yourself. And I'll see you later on. Goodbye.